Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can use the Group Expert to create groupings within your report by which you can view subtotals and sort the report data. For example, let's assume that you were requested to create a report that shows employee sales with totals by employee. Oftentimes, when you state the purpose of the report, you will notice that you wish to see the data by some field. The word by is often an indication of by which field you will want to create the groups within your report. When you create groups based on the value of a field, Crystal Reports will group together all of the exact same values that are found within the selected field. You can then perform additional calculations over the groups that are established. For example, summing the value of an amount sold field for each unique grouping of values found within an employee ID field. Grouping by data fields makes these types of summary calculations possible. In Crystal Reports, you can use the Group Expert dialog box to create the groupings necessary for your report and set any additional options you may want. You can launch the Group Expert dialog box by either clicking the Group Expert button that appears in the Experts toolbar or by choosing Report and then the Group Expert command from the menu bar. In the Group Expert dialog box, you can click the name of the field by which you want to create the first group within the Available Fields list. Then click the single right pointing arrow to move the selected field over into the Group By list. You can then click another field within the Available Fields list, and then click the same arrow button again to move it over into the Group By list at the right side of the dialog box if you need to create another grouping within the first grouping. Note that any subgroupings appear indented below the previous grouping above them. If you want to remove a field by which you are grouping values within the Group By list, Click its name to select it, and then click the single left pointing arrow to send the field back to the list of available fields at the left side of the dialog box. If you added the fields by which you want to create the groupings to the group by list at the right side of the dialog box in the incorrect order, note that you can easily rearrange the order of the fields listed by clicking the name of the field within the group by list and then clicking the small up and down arrows in the upper right corner of the dialog box to change the order of the grouped fields. You can also set the properties of the data fields in the Group Expert dialog box. Just click the field for which you want to set grouping options within the Group By list, and then click the Options button at the bottom of the list. That will launch the Change Group Options dialog box. There are two tabs here which you can use to set the group properties, the Common tab and the Options tab. If you click the Common tab, you will be presented with the name of the field by which the groupings will be created displayed in a drop-down box. Below that, you have another drop-down that displays the four different options that you have for sorting data. You can select to sort the groups in either ascending order, A to Z or 1 to 9, or descending order, Z to A or 9 to 1. You can also select to leave the record sorted in original order, which will exempt the groups from any artificial sorting. And if you select the In Specified Order option, you will add and display the Specified Order tab. Here you can create a specified order by which to sort the groups that is neither ascending nor descending, for example the days of the week. Now note that on the specified order tab you can create the custom sort order that will be used for the group. You can use the named group drop-down to choose a value from the field by which you want to sort if the field happens to contain a value by which you want to create the groupings. You can select multiple fields from this drop-down if needed. Each field that you select is added to the list of values that is then displayed below.
You can change the sort order of the values in this list by first clicking the value whose position in the list you want to change. Then click the small up and down arrows to the right of the list to change its position within the list values. You can remove a field value that you have added to the listing of values by selecting the value to remove and then clicking the delete button below the list. You can also add a new value by which to sort the displayed results by simply clicking the new button below the list of values. This will then launch the Define Named Group dialog box. Here you can type a name for one of the values in your group into the Group Name text box displayed at the top. You can then specify a filtering criteria by which items will be placed into the named group that you created. When you have finished creating the group, click the OK button to add the group to the list in the Specified Order tab. Now if you select a range of records, which you will then reference as a single named group in the Specified Order tab, then you should indicate what you will do with the rest of the non-selected records on the Others tab. When you click the Others tab, you can set your desired option. Discard all others, put all others together with the name, which you can then type into the box provided, or leave them in their own groups. Back on the Common tab, it's worth noting that if you have a date field selected, for the grouping. Then you will also see another drop down appear under the listing of the section will be printed. Here you can choose the date grouping that you want to use for your selected field. If you have a logical or boolean value selected for your grouping, then you will instead see a drop down that gives you options for creating groups based on the logical values of true and false. Now finally, you can click the Options tab to set other available options for the grouped field. Normally, when you create field groupings in reports, you will see a new Group Tree pane at the left of the report that you can use to jump to the various sections of the report. You will also typically have a Group Header and Group Footer where you can see the names of the groups in your report. By default, the group name fields have the same values as the group field. You can check the Customize Group Name Field checkbox to specify the group name field as either a database field or a group name formula that returns a string or text value that can be used for the group name field. For example, you could group by the Employee ID field but choose to display the employee name for the group field name if desired. To select a database field, use the drop-down to choose which field's values to display for the group name field from the drop-down available. If you wanted to, you can also choose the Use a Formula as Group Name option, and then click the X plus 2 button to create a text formula that you can use for the values. We will discuss creating formulas later in this class. Note that you cannot choose to customize the group name at all for fields that are sorted in a specified order as we looked at previously. You can also check the Keep Group Together checkbox to try to keep the groups that are created from breaking across multiple pages if possible. You can check the New Page After checkbox to create a new page after a specified number of visible groups have appeared. You can also check the Repeat Group Header on Each Page checkbox to allow groups that do break across multiple pages to repeat the group header information on each page. Once you have set any options for the selected field by which you are grouping, Click the OK button in the Change Group Options dialog box to return to the Group Expert dialog box. Once you have set all of your grouping options, then click the OK button in the Group Expert dialog box to apply the selected groupings to the report. Notice that when you create groupings within a report, Crystal Reports will then create a group header and a group footer. 
and it will create one for each field by which you have created groupings, both above and below the details section in the design view of the report. So if you have added multiple fields by which you're grouping, then you will see multiple group headers and footers, labeled group header number one, group header number two, and so on and so forth. Also, Crystal Reports will add the group name, as you specified it when setting the options, into the group header sections. Remember that data that is placed into the group header will repeat at the top of each unique value within the group that was created, and data placed into the group footer will repeat at the end of each unique value within each group. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.